Hello, another demo on WebWatchBot to show you the key features of setting up an alarm. Uh, so in uh, the last tutorial on creating a watch item, if you already know how to do that, uh, you're definitely on your way to learning the product. And just gonna go ahead and open up uh, this watch item for Google. Just gonna right click on it, open the properties, and go into the uh, alarm tab where we're going to go through all the different features that are within the alarm. Um, just to recap from the last video, you can trigger an alarm, which will then cause different actions to play out. The trigger is um, set by default, and by default also one consecutive failure will trigger the alarm, causing the watch item to go down, and also cause the actions to uh, kick off. Um, the other feature here is repeat the action until the alarm is reset. Now this is a special feature that was added in version 6. What it does is it will continuously cause any action such as an email alert or a sound or a custom action to be fired off until the alarm is reset. Now that can be manually done by resetting the alarm um, or automatically if the watch item actually has, in this case, one consecutive success. So one of the things we tend to tell people as a best practice is you don't want to have the trigger be one and you don't want the reset to be one. Why? Because there are false positives. Something might go down temporarily, you might have a network problem, maybe the network card just decided to have a hiccup, or someone unplugged the network card. These things happen, it's common. You really want to be sure that if the web, website goes down or if whatever you're monitoring is offline, you're getting something that truly is bad. So we suggest to do a trigger of three and the reset number of two. So it's gonna take three consecutive failures for this watch item to go down and two consecutive successes for it to come back up. So what can happen is you can have it go down, come back up, go down, come back up, go down, come back up. Won't trigger the alarm. Now if it goes down three times in a row, that alarm is going to get triggered. And then say it comes back again, you get, a, you get a successful response and only one, and then it goes back down again, you get a, another failure it's still not coming back up. You gotta have two consecutive successes in a row. So let's go ahead and go into the actions just by clicking on the actions button in the trigger area. This pulls up the alarm actions dialog. And the first tab is for the email alerts. This is pretty basic. You can put in email addresses separated by a comma or a semicolon or a pipe. Um, you can also add contacts. Contacts are different email addresses that you've set up ahead of time. We're not going to cover that in this uh, video, but it is there. It's something you can put in your email address, maybe your boss's, that sort of thing. Maybe not your boss's. <laughs> maybe you want to know before your boss, so you want to put in your email address only. Um, you can set the subject. We have these special tags um, and the help file and our wiki also show you how to put in these special tags. They mean different things. You can put in additional text in the email. This will be at the very top. Maybe you want to put in something that's like um, server A in North America or um, you know this is a special client, treat with care or something along those lines. Um, by default you're also going to have the output sent. That's this checkbox here. Um, and the other option, you could have a report run and attach that to the email alert. We don't always recommend this because if you get a number of failures on a server at once, say you have 20 different failures um, all at once because maybe DNS server goes down or maybe um, that server cluster has some major outage you're going to be running 20 reports at once. You're going to be running a report for every one of them that you have this checkbox checked for. And that's going to put a good load on your server where you have our product installed on. 
It's not something that you, you can't do. It's just something that you need to be aware of. I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. And I'll go ahead and put in our salespeople email. They love to receive these email alerts. Just going to go ahead and move to the visual tab. And this is a special um, pop-up that you would get. And this only will work if you are running in our what we call application mode, not running as a service. Um, so why would you use this? Well, maybe you're just running some testing and you can switch over our application to use application mode. It's in uh, under tools, web watch, bot preferences. I'm not going to cover how to get to that or what it looks like right now, but it is there. The same goes for sound. Um, it needs to be in application mode um, and it can play any sound that may be in um, on your computer. Um, the other one that can be run in the normal service mode or application mode is any kind of custom action. So you may want to run something like an external program. Maybe you have a dialer you want to run. Um, maybe you have some special SMS program you want to kick off. Whatever it might be. If it can run from the command line, this will run that program. Um, and you can just go ahead and switch it on to active once you enter in whatever that program is. And if you're in application mode, it can execute in the foreground. Otherwise, it will just be in the background. You will never see it. And it's going to get kicked off. And another app uh, option is to do the URL to execute. This could be a web service. Could be maybe some type of a process that runs on your web server whatever it might be. You could put in a URL with a query string, something like that. Okay, so for just this demo purpose, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as an email alert. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now we have an action, three failures and two successes to do a reset. And I'm going to go ahead and um, just go ahead and put in the sales email here for the reset. Okay, so we're going to have an email sent when the watch item comes back up. And I'm going to switch over to the general tab and I'm going to force this to fail. I'm going to go ahead and say that the timeout needs to be less than or equal to one millisecond. There's not a website on earth that's going to be able to do that. Now maybe if it's on your local server maybe that would work. But anyway, it's it's going to fail for sure. Let's go ahead and click OK. OK, so we're going to go ahead and run this watch item. And you can see uh, we're just going to highlight that. It's already highlighted, and I'm going to click Run Now. And it fails. It took too long. Got a HTTP status code 408 timed out. Let's run it again. And now we have two failures. And you can see that the error is that just didn't have enough time to respond because we set the timeout to two milliseconds. I'm going to run it for the third time. Now it's running and you can see in the log here that it failed, took too long, and that our email alert was actually successfully sent and also a log was created. So um, we went ahead and triggered that alarm Center email alert. Let's go ahead and modify the properties. I'm just going to go ahead and take this timeout out. In fact, why don't we just change it to 5,000 milliseconds? A little more reasonable. And you can see up here in the watch list that the watch item is down. It's got a red arrow pointing down, the alarm status is down, and failure is at 100%. Not good. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so we got a positive response, took less than 5,000 milliseconds or 5 seconds, but it's still down. If you remember, we set the reset to two consecutive successes to reset the alarm. So it's only been one. Let's go ahead and run it one more time, and we should see it automatically reset. Arrow goes back up, it's green, the alarm status is up. 
in the log, you can see we've had a success, two consecutive successes in a row, and we get an email alert sent, everything's back. So everything we configured is looking good, and everything is running as expected. So this concludes the demo on setting up an alarm, email alerts. Thank you very much for watching.